Joseph took his wife and child And they went to Africa To escape the rage of a deadly king There along the banks of the Nile Jesus listened to the song that the captive children used to sing. They were singing. Thy deliverer is coming. Thy deliverer is standing by. Thy deliverer is coming. Thy deliverer is standing by. and thirsty land water from the canyon heights pours itself out of Lake Sangra's broken heart there in the Sahara winds Jesus heard the whole world cry for the healing that would flow from his own scar, the world was singing.
What's wrong? Your mind seems a million miles away. It wouldn't happen to be on someone by the name of Joseph, now would it? If Joseph were my boyfriend, my mind would be on him too. If Joseph were your boyfriend, his mind would need examining. <laughs> and just how many men have asked for your hand in marriage, Rebecca? Do you want to know the exact number, or can I round it off? Just round it off. Very well. OK, zero. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I haven't thought about it. Just as we figured. Mary, can I speak with you? Go on. You can finish this. What do you think they're talking about? It's none of our concern, but I sure wish they'd speak up. Girls, girls, what's on the privacy? You're right, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Abigail! Oh, all right. Mary, I've been thinking about what you said today. I don't fully understand it either, Joseph, but you must believe me, and we must trust in him. I believe you, Mary, and I've come here to tell you I'll be here for you, and I'll trust him. work for our good Though sometimes we don't see how they could Struggles that break our hearts in two Sometimes blind us to the truth Our Father knows
understand when you don't see his plan when you can't trace his hand trust his heart when you don't understand when you don't see his plan when you can't trace his hand be with you, Mary. I know, Joseph. You'd better go now. She's coming, she's coming. Is everything all right, Mary? I just have a lot on my mind. Well, if you ever need someone to confide in, you can trust me. <laughs> I appreciate your concern, my friends. But what I am facing... I must guard in my heart. Well, whatever it is, it must be good news. You look radiant. You do have a certain glow about you, Mary. You don't want to give us a little hint? No, I can't. Then at least tell us this much. Is it? Is it what? Good news? It's the best news this world has ever or will ever know.
of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed and all went to be taxed everyone into his own city Bartholomew Bartholomew now what is it wife get up and get out here we have work to do but this is my day to rest Every day is your day to rest. And this is one of them. <sighs> Bethlehem will soon be full of travelers coming to register for Caesar's tax. And we want to at least entice some of them to stay with us. We do? Yes. We have beds to make, meals to prepare. Naps to take. Oh, you are the most <laughs> wonderful husband I could ever hope for. Oh, let him sleep. We'll be happy to accommodate any travelers who come our way. Yes, I'm sure you will, dear neighbor. Bartholomew, why aren't you out here? When I took thy hand in marriage, why didn't someone warn me that my mouth went with it? What was that? I said, coming, dear. OK, well, it's about time now. Um, I've made a list of some things you need to do today. What did I do with the list you gave me last week? Well, add this to it. You'll have me working till the Messiah comes. Well, then so be it. We have empty rooms. We need to fill them with paying customers. Now, get to work, husband. Wasn't it King Solomon that said, a continual drifting on a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike? What? I said, I live to please you, dear. Do I have a room? Do I have a room? You're welcome here. We say shalom. Come right on in. Make yourself at home. We have clean towels and we have ice. And don't forget to mention mice. We've got much more to offer you. We've got it all. And bed bugs, too. Come in and rest your weary feet. Stay here instead. We change our sheets. Do you need a place to stay? No, no reservations. reservations. That's, That's okay. okay. For only six shekels per day, you're welcome here. Staying here makes perfect sense, for we will treat you like a prince. And on your pillow, we'll leave mints. <laughs> your our wake-up calls are never late but their beds feel like wooden crates. <laughs> Our rooms are air conditioned too. Well, sure, when the roof caves in on you. Our swimming pool's the best round. It's just a puddle in the ground. I cook the meals for all our guests. Well, that's true. And now in peace they rest. <laughs> Did I say six shekels per day? I meant five. Four shekels a day, and you won't find a better rate in all of Bethlehem. Three shekels. And I'll make continental breakfast, too. Two shekels for a nice, clean room with a view. A view of what? Your stable? Well, a stable's not so bad. That depends on which way the wind is blowing. One shekel and valet parking for your donkey. I'll take it. You're welcome here. <sighs> right on in. That woman, she's done it again. Bartholomew! Bartholomew! And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth to Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. How much farther, Joseph? Bethlehem's there, in the distance. We should reach it by nightfall. But I'm so weary. Let's rest here for a moment. Joseph? Yes, Mary? What do you think God has planned for this baby? Well, 
the angel said the baby was to be called Jesus and that he would save the people from their sin. Yes, but how can that be? Only a blood sacrifice can redeem us from sin. It's getting dark. Let's continue on. Well, good morning, Bart. Wait a minute. This is morning. What are you doing up so early? Well, you know, when I felt the warmth of the sunlight on my face this morning, I said to myself, how can I waste this glorious day just sleeping it away? <laughs> so I rushed and got dressed and just couldn't wait to get out here to bask in the glory of the sunshine. I see. So your wife told you to get up and get to work too, huh? You got it. Yeah. But these things do have to get done. They sure do. Hey, can you believe how crowded it is in Bethlehem today? I never thought I'd be happy for a new tax, but it sure has helped business. Yeah. Hey, by the way, can I ask you something? I know, I know. You want to borrow the ladder again? The ladder? Well, no, not the ladder. It's okay. It, it's your turn anyway. Remember, I borrowed it from you last spring, you borrowed it from me in the summer, and I borrowed it again in the fall. By the way, whose is it anyway? It's gone back for so many times, I've forgotten. Me too. Oh, yeah. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I don't have to do the roof now. But as I was saying, there's something, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something in the air. I know, I know. The stable is next on my list. <laughs> well, that would be nice, but no, it's not the stable. There's a, it's like a feeling, a feeling that something wonderful is about to happen, right here in Bethlehem. Some say cleaning out my stable would be wonderful. <laughs> well, it's, I think, so wonderful that I don't even think we can comprehend it. Excuse me, yeah? but I couldn't help overhearing you. I've been having that same feeling, too. You have? I can't explain it, but it's plainly something great. Yes, I agree with everything you say. It's something wonderful. Perhaps stupendous. It just might be the most important thing to ever come our way right here in our little town of Bethlehem. Next week? No, I think it's more imminent than that. Tomorrow? No, I even think it's before tomorrow. We're on the brink. Of something marvelous. Something astounding. Even miraculous. And I feel it's probably even way tonight. You know, I, I feel it too. It's like the voice of an angel riding in the wind, gently stirring us to action. Bartholomew, get to work! That wasn't it. Oh.
worship at one time. Oh, more travelers. I'm sorry, my wife's getting away almost every room. I don't even think I'm gonna have a place to sleep tonight. I forgot to put the sign up. We got to find somewhere else, sorry. Yes, we'd like a room for the night. Oh, I never thought I'd live to be able to say this, but we are full. Oh, my husband was supposed to put up the no vacancy sign, but of course, would he do it? No. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, you have worries of your own. You don't need to hear mine. Um, have you checked the other ends? Yes, we've tried them all. I I'm sorry. You are our last hope. I I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. They can have my room, Mother. Your room indeed, young lady. You would do anything to stay up late with the adults. Now get off to bed. But Mother, you can't just turn them away. Who knows who their baby's gonna grow up to be someday? Honey, even if he grew up to be king, I still don't have the room. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Come. Wait, I have an idea. Don't leave. Um, well, I, my daughter, she seems she seems to think you might be willing to stay in our stable, but you know kids, they, they don't always know what they're talking about, and we, you know. Ma'am, we'd love to stay there. See, they don't want to, what? As you can see, my wife's time is almost here. We'd be grateful for shelter of any kind. Well, I, I guess it is better than nothing. Okay, well, follow me, it's just this way. me or do the stars seem brighter tonight? Yes, the stars do seem brighter tonight, unfortunately. Unfortunately? We can now see what you've been putting in the stew. Yeah, it tasted better when it was a mystery. <laughs> Those wishing to complain about my cooking should be warned. The cook's position stands open. Any takers? I didn't think so. So, whose night is it to keep watch anyway? I had last night. Not the night before. Why don't we all get some sleep? After all, what could happen in one night? Are you serious? Everything could happen. 
Besides, we're the shepherds. We can't just leave our sheep alone all night long. You know, my brothers, I've had a feeling that something big was going to happen tonight. You're just trying to get me to stay awake. No, that's not it. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But somehow tonight is special to us, to Bethlehem, maybe even to the whole world. That's the stew talking. <laughs> I understand what Yvonne is saying. I had a similar feeling, too. All right, all right, I'll keep watch. But if tonight passes and not a single thing happens, I'm not going to believe any of you guys next time. Mary, look. Isn't he beautiful? He is, isn't he? It's hard to believe the Messiah would be born here in a stable. His royalty doesn't come from where he was born but from who he is. Jesus, Holy Son of God, welcome to our world. I sit here night after night, and not a single thing... Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. 
You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We want to give special thanks to Janice Headings for all the work on the drama team, and it takes a lot of time and patience, and to Joyce Allen for all the patience required with the choir and the vocals, and all those with the lighting and the sound, and of course the choir and the actors. Let's give them all, uh, once again, a, a round of applause. Maybe.
Bethlehem's Big Night. Man had, man had simply made it a busy night. Can you imagine what it would have been like? It, w- it wasn't just a couple people moving from one city to another. If they weren't living in their heritage home, as it were, where their family hailed from, then they had to go there. And it wasn't necessarily next door. Mary and Joseph made a longer trek than, than that. It was 70, maybe 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. That's a long way. They, they didn't have any cars, although they did have a few caravans. But they, they didn't have any cars. And that was a long way, whether by foot or by donkey. It was still a long, tiring journey. Man had made it a busy night. It wasn't just one person looking for lodging. It was many, and if they were lucky, they found one for a shekel with with valley parking for the donkey. But I think it was probably more than that. And it it was chaotic. It was pandemonium. Man had made that. It was God that made it a big night, not man. God made it a big night. Man had not only made it a a, a busy night, but he had made it a, a night of taking. It was a time of taxation. They were to, to gather in the city in order for a census for taxation. He was in man's busy night. It was to take from man. In God's big night, it was to give to man, to give to man a gift that is just incomprehensible, to give to man, not through taxation, but through incarnation, which will lead to salvation. Man's night. Oh, that can compare to God's night, the big night. A verse that often comes to mind, it's not really found, I think it's a Christmas text, but it's not really found in, in the Christmas passage, but I like the verse, in, well, it's a verse in uh, part, um, over, over in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and part of 5, and you can include all five, but I probably won't quote that far, but, but it, in the fullness of the time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who are under the law. When? In the fullness of time. Now, God looks at time totally different than we do. The, the, the word there, and they could use, the Apostle Paul could have used a few different words for, for that term, the passing of time. One term meant simply just that, the passing of time. Another, uh, karyos, meant an epic time in which God did something right then. It was a critical, epic time in, in, in the history of man. But the term that was used was more the lapse of time. But it wasn't, it wasn't a wasting of time. God doesn't waste time. In fact, he instructs us to redeem the time. God doesn't waste time, but there had to be things in place that took all those years from the first mention of the seed of a woman who would come to the time in Bethlehem, that big night. Things had to be put in place. And when it was ready, God sent forth his son. Some of the things that were ready, one, Although it was a, a, a cruel time for uh, Israel and others through, because of, well, the Roman Empire, they did some good things. There was a whole road system that they created. Now, it was through slave labor, but I know what that's like. No, it was, it was through, um, through the s- slave system, but 
roads connecting city to city, and there's, there's a proverb, you know, all roads leading to Rome. That helped. That was a great help then when it came time to proclaim the gospel. There was a road system that could be utilized. Not only that, but Greek had become more established as the language, uh, universal language, other languages were used. But that, again, was a tremendous help. And those things were set in place, and other things as well, then all incorporated that in the fullness of the time, God sent forth his son. Not merely sending forth. It's, it's a word used like for an ambassador. The act of one sending forth another to do something for him, that one being sent, bearing credentials. But it was more than that. It was more than just a sending forth by someone. That word used includes sending forth out from the very presence of. God sent his son out of his very presence into our world. Paul incorporated the, uh, the, the truth that this one sent forth was truly God who became truly man. Born of woman, reminding us of that ancient promise back in, in um, Genesis 3.15, the seed of a woman. So we know when he was sent forth, we know who was sent forth. We know how he was sent forth. Why was he sent forth? To redeem. To redeem those who are under the law. The whole plan of redemption. Uh, to redeem. The term used in the... It's a term used to buy out from the marketplace. It was the act of... Again, it was already mentioned that slavery was very popular. And you could go to any city and purchase a slave. Buy out of the market a slave, and now it was your choice. That slave could either be for yourself, or you could set the slave free. Christ went into the marketplace of sin. He paid the price for us and bought mankind, bought those We'll see in a second who would go place their faith in him. He paid the price for all. Make no mistake of that. He paid for all sin ever committed, ever would be committed. He paid for it. But he did both in that he bought us for himself but set us free. Whom the Son has set free, ye shall be free indeed. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his Son. It's that song, I, I don't know if it's our, in our hymnals or, or not. It's one I grew up with. Out of the ivory palaces, out of the ivory palaces, into a world of war. Now, I was totally wrong on that. I had a Christmas party last night. And my voice is pretty shot. But it's the idea out of the very presence of God into this world. There's a word that occurs a few times in Scripture, and I won't keep you much longer here, but We have the idea in, in the presentation, and I can't say it, it's not so, I wasn't there, of an anticipation that this was going to happen. I don't know. I do know that God chose to go to the shepherds, and they're the ones that knew first there. But I also know, later in the ministry of Christ, how he was received says he came unto his own, and his own received him not. 
That was the reception Christ got. Came into his own, and his own received him not. But then I'm reminded of another time where that word is used. It's over in, in John 14, where Christ is comforting his disciples and, and says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. But there's another receive that is necessary for that to take place. And that's in the first chapter of John, where it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become a child of God, even to those who believe on his name. Have you received Christ? That one, well, he didn't remain in the manger. He grew. He lived a perfect life. He gave that life an offering on the cross for our sin. The Father accepted that sacrifice, raised him to life, so that we, in placing faith in what he did on the cross, could also have that eternal life. And it's available to all of us. And it could be your big night. It could be. What do we have to do? God didn't make it hard. He made it so that whosoever will believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's agreeing with God, agreeing with God concerning who his son is, what his son did, what he says about us and our need of a Savior. And you have an opportunity. If you've never, if you've never trusted Christ, We'll bow our heads. You can follow me in a, in a prayer. And again, it's not a prayer. The prayer doesn't save. It's believing in Christ that saves. But we express, we express our hearts to God in, in prayer. But a simple prayer, Father, God, I know I'm a sinner. Your word says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that includes me. I know that your son was sent forth, lived a perfect life, and died on the cross for my sin. I put my trust in him. In asking forgiveness of my sin, I ask you to become my Lord and Savior. I thank you for doing this. In Jesus' name, amen.